Let's move on to the Patreon questions. This one's from Heather. I'm interested in the idea or truth that every moment, every experience, every atrocity, every circumstance contains love. If every moment experience contains love, how are negative emotions such as anger, rage, hate, used by love to bring the experience of those emotions closer to the truth of love? Especially anger, rage, as those emotions are heavily energizing and frequently bring in the impulse to take action. Will love use anger, rage in order to energize the experiencer to take actions that lead the individual closer to experiences of love and truth? This is a good, this is a good thing to, to, you know, go deep with. Can anger, rage be divinely guided, cultivated within an individual or group? Or is it always a tool of the lower energy to support separation and division? I'm also interested in how anger may be linked to the fire elemental. Okay, so before I ask them, it's my understanding that, um, well, let me just channel because I, they'll explain it better than me. All right, so the main question, um, will love use anger or rage in order to energize the experiencer to take actions that lead the individual closer to experiences of love and truth. This question presumes that love is able to force, so to speak, an individual to do something uh, by using something else. The truth is that love embodies, and the love that's not embodied, or the part of the whole that's not embodied, will support those who are embodied, who are in a physical realm. And if you're in a physical realm where there are negative or lower densities, then those densities can interact with your soul essence, you might call it, while you're in that density. However, It is part of the experience of being in the density to be um, influenced, let's say, by the anger or rage or negative emotions. The, the higher you, well, higher is a, a, it implies better than, um, the, the closer you are to source, uh, so if you imagine like you start at source, you, you know, I, I, don't, I always um, relate it to the Big Bang. You start, you start at source, Big Bang, you go out, 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 away from source. And then you start your journey and you, well, you could have started your journey, you know, closer to source and then went, went uh, to negative polarity, I suppose. And then once you get out as far as you can with negative polarity, then you start your journey back to source. You start getting uh, more and more loving, less and less, you know, anything negatively polarized. So the closer you are to coming back and merging back with source, um, the more you'll be able to look at the negative density, the negative polarity or the, the density that you're in and say, well, yes, this is negative density, but what can I learn from it? That's a higher perspective um, understanding or reasoning. Because if you're further away from source and you're in density, then the thought, what can I learn from this, is not going to occur to you. 
you're going to be stuck in it, wallowing in it, uh, magnifying it. This always happens to me. I'm just a, you know, the world is just horrible and I'll never get anything from you wallow, you wallow. But the closer you are to ascending, the, where you, wherever you are on the ascension path, which also sort of implies something is better than something else, which it isn't true. But so I say, you know, the closer you are to getting, you know, closer to the positive polarity or it's not really positive polarity, uh, merging back to love, unconditional love. The closer you are to that, the more you understand and can be unconditionally loving even to the negative polarity. Not just the people, but negative incidences, negative expressions, you know, fires, um, you know, bad things that happen. You can go farther away from source and wallow, or you can come closer to source and say, how can I, how can I use this experience of negative polarity of density to help me grow, to serve me? So it's not created by source. Well, <laughs> I can't even say that either. Um, it's not like God sitting upon high saying, um, she's not very motivated. Let's, um, let's send in this guy that she hates to really piss her off. And, um, and that'll make her say, this job sucks, I'm leaving. And that'll prompt her to action. No. <laughs> There's no, there's no person up there going, let's, let's poke at her until she's fed up. Um, there, are, no, <laughs> you would, um, with, with your, I'm not talking about you specifically, but with your frequency, If you held the frequency of this guy always pisses me off. Why do people always piss me off? Why do these people keep like, why do I always run into these people that are so irritating and come in here and talk to me like this? And little, you may have a pattern of it, or it may have happened somewhere in your childhood. And it's just like, it's, it's in your subconscious. It's a frequency you're holding back there somewhere you may not even know about. And it's going to be drawn to you. It's, it's all about frequency. Now, you could be in a frequency where you've been asking for a much better job and much better relationships and you'll get fired from your current job. That seems like a negative thing. That seems like your guides are like, we're going to make sure she gets fired from this job because there's another job that we want her to take, but it doesn't work like that. Um, you've aligned with the frequency of a better job. And so the universe, the, the energy, well, I mean, I guess you could say your guides because the guides are a part of the universal energy, the source energy, and it runs through everything. It's not really energy, but we don't have a word for it. So you're emanating. I can see myself in a better place than this. And the universe's energy coalesces until it interacts with you in a physical way, because we're in a physical dimension, a physical density. So the energy has coalesced, and now you find yourself in the situation that's called, I just got fired and this sucks. If you continue to say, all right, well, maybe I can use this for my benefit. Maybe I'm just going to take a look around and see what I can find. Maybe I'm going to talk to my friends about this. And maybe somebody's going to say, you know what? There is a job that is perfect for you. And maybe you'll find out that it pays double. And it's full of really awesome people. Because you held that possibility open. It is also possible that you could be like really depressed about it, that your momentum is so great in the positive uh, possibilities and the belief that you could get a better job, that even if you get depressed, you still get the better job. And it could happen in any way. But it's really all, um, it's all in this energetic soup moving around, moving through everyone and getting realigned based on how we feel and what, um, 
you know, what impulses, what energetic, what energy do we put out? What are we thinking about? Our thoughts create. What thoughts are we having? What thoughts are we believing? What hope do we hold? Or do we just believe everything happens to us and we're stuck and so that's how we stay stuck? I don't like to believe that there's a, just like there's not a, I don't like believing there's opposing, like there's a God and there's a devil and the devil is trying to like do everything to keep you from your goal. And God's over here going, oh, I want you to come to this goal and I'm going to send you like support and love and, you know, because I mean, if you think of it more like. You have the power, you are love, you're unconditional love, you are in a density where you can learn, you are using this density to learn how to get closer to that ultimate unconditional love that's the highest love that you even that you know about from this perspective. There could be so much more that we don't know. But from this perspective, this is, you know, how we can look at it. So you can revel in the density and become really bad and do bad things and get your way doing bad things. You can do that. That's allowed here. But it can't control you. You have that choice. That's what free will is. And so what it seems like the classic light worker does is says, Hmm. What is this situation trying to tell me? When I was in the hospital, uh, and I had the surgery because I was going to die because I had like rampant infection in my midsection. <laughs> I, um, I had a hypnosis session with, uh, Rebecca again, Rebecca Rice. And we went to see where I went or what happened during the surgery. Well, I popped out of my body while they were doing the surgery. And I was standing there with my guides. And the point they were trying to make to me is, look what you've done. Look what you've done to yourself. <laughs> I was so busy trying to control everything so that everybody else was happy. I was wrecking myself. It was that control that caused me to get sick. I was taking care of everybody but myself. And looking at yourself on an operating table while you're outside of your body is gross. <laughs> it's gross. I mean, I couldn't even I couldn't see specifically the stuff they're operating on. But I was so like swollen and puffy from the infection from all the stuff they were pumping me with saline and, you know, all kinds of drugs and med and I just was, oh, oh, that body was a mess. And then I went off and did a bunch of other stuff in the you know time they were operating on me. But we have a choice. And sometimes we can't tell what choice we're making. But I can tell you that the horrible bad thing that happened to me being in severe pain and having to have an operation and then having to go back and have another another operation, you can wallow in that easily. Why did this have to happen to me? Why am I so miserable? Oh, my kids had such a hard time while I was gone. And my husband was so worried. And my family were so worried. And oh, what a terrible thing. And it must have been like the negative entities trying to like beat me down because I'm a light worker. No, no. You were resonating at a frequency of control, which is fear, which is a negative polarity emotion. If you're resonating with that and you don't realize it, bad physical stuff can happen because that's where we are. We're in the density where that can happen. So do you wallow in it or do you go, man, I'm so glad I had the opportunity to see that I was wrecking myself and I didn't even realize it. And I'm so glad I had the opportunity to see that, that control 
even if I'm trying to make somebody else happy, is still controlling. You're taking away their free will. And it's fear. So not only are you taking away their free will, but you're in negative polarity. So. Let's see. How how can anger... Is anger linked to the fire elemental? I gotta tell you, I don't know anything about elementals or how they work, but let me just ask. Hmm. Okay. They're saying it burns off. Um, it burns off the stuff that makes it so that you can't see what you're doing. Does that make sense? And I would go so far as to say it's not just anger, it's fear. Well, anger is fear at a base level. If you trace your anger back, what are you angry about? And you keep asking, well, why does that make me angry? Well, why? Well, what's the emotion behind that and behind that? And behind, eventually you're going to get back to fear. So I would say the fire elemental is an, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Is an, is an evolved fear. So by the time you get to anger, anger is going to burn. And it's going to burn so hot that it burns off all this. Like after you get that angry and you calm down or you ruin something, you burn a bridge or something, then you see, then you can see what you've done. Then you can see what's been going on. Then you can see what's been happening, what you've been thinking. If you choose to examine it, you can't just let the fire elemental burn and not li not learn anything. If you choose to, to just wallow in the fire, to just let it eat you up. You can live in anger for a long time. It'll eventually kill you. You'll have a stroke or a heart attack or a aneurysm. It'll eat you up or somebody will kill you because you're just angry all the time. You're just resonating at anger. So you'll draw more of that to you. They always have fights with somebody. So. I think. I prefer to look at any given situation. Of course, I have a Leo ascendant. So I've been told that's why I do this. I always try to look for a bright spot in anything. Because otherwise, you just have, you, you would just accept that um, crappy things happen and you just have to live with it. And then you're in the fear and uncertainty that something else bad might happen and then you'll have to live with that. Or you can live with uncertainty that something bad is going to happen, it will. I mean, you know, bad stuff happens. It could be minor. It can be major. It happens to people all the time. It happens to every person. But if you go in to life with the expectation that no matter what bad thing might happen, you can evolve from it. You can learn something amazing from it. And you can have a better life after it happens. You know, my husband and I are so appreciative of each other because he broke his ankle on Christmas Day. He had to have surgery. And then he was immobile for I don't know how many weeks. It was the same time as my dad was getting cancer treatments. <laughs> and I had to help take him to the treatments. And my kids were homeschooled, so I had three kids with me all the time. But I took care of him because... How else, like, how would you feel? Like, I know how I would feel if I was stuck in a bed and I couldn't do anything and I was in extreme pain, you know? So I took care of him. I, you know, I checked on him. I got him food. I made sure he had everything he needed before I had to leave the house. 
And when I had my surgery, oh my gosh, you would not believe the things that he did to help me. I didn't have to do nearly as much stuff to help him as he did when I had my surgeries. But he was, you know, he was scared. He's glad I'm alive. So bad things, yes, we survived. And, you know, I'm remembering what my dad always said is that which does not kill you makes you stronger. And I don't remember who said that originally. Obviously, it wasn't my dad. But (laughs) anyway, that's the only question uh, topic I have for this month. I don't know if everybody's as uh, busy and crazy as I am. I know we're we've got like a lot of planets in retrograde and Mercury retrograde and that's always a, a little challenging for people. I, I'm having my own challenges. I, my daughter has got some kind of weird dizziness and nausea that, that I just found out has been uh, happening to her since as long as she can remember. She can't remember not feeling it. But it's gotten progressively worse the past month. Uh, so, yeah, many doctor's visits for her. Um my my oldest son who's 15 and Emma's 11 my oldest son Ben is 15 he is really having a hard time at school he's got um accommodations for his ADHD but uh it just doesn't seem to be enough so we've got another one scheduled but he's having to work from home because his anxiety is through the roof and I just realized he may have Asperger's so I'm, I'm researching all the autism things and we're trying to get him a referral to uh, see if he does have autism and that way we can do things that are, that are more appropriate for him. Not that we care about labels, we don't, but people have already worked with people with ADHD and autism and they, you know, people are autistic or have ADHD that I can say, hey, work, what, what works for you? And try that for him so he can have a more relaxing life because I don't want my kids to suffer. I don't want them to go to school being anxious every day or being dizzy and feeling like they're going to throw up every day. And my middle child, bless him, he's dyslexic. So he has a little trouble um, doing his work in class. So he, he brings a lot of homework home. When I mean, they have time to do it in class, but he just can't concentrate enough. But he's he's doing really well. He's a He's, um, he's very resilient. Anyway, that's what's going on in my life. It's quite a challenge. Oh, and my husband got a new job. So I made all these appointments for, you know, different things. Trying to, uh, take care of myself. So I've got a bunch of appointments to catch up on, which I haven't been able to do because I'm taking my kids to different things. Um, but he switched jobs and the insurance is going to change. So that's a little challenge. So we'll see how that works out. <laughs> but guess what? I know these are repeating patterns from another time. Because I've been through, not with my daughter so much, a little bit. She had. She also has sensory issues. So clothes are always an issue for her. And we have done the thing before where, you know, it's time to go to school. And her socks feel weird in her shoes. And so she has to take her shoes off a hundred times to try to get her socks seems right. And we're And so we're revisiting another sort of thing for her and and uh you know we've been through this with Ben for I don't know how many times like I always feel like I'm just repeating repeating it's getting better each time so maybe this will be the time we resolve a bunch of things and then you know that lesson that growth just gets added so you know I'm not getting too upset about all the things I feel pretty good about um, things this time, you know, this repeating pattern is not so bad because I know what it is mainly. So if you have a lot of stuff going on right now, you feel like, haven't I already done this? Yeah, but you're, you're checking in with yourself again. I wouldn't, I'm not going to say somebody else is sending it back to you so that you can perfect it. You're giving yourself a chance to look at it again and say, how do I really feel about this? What do I really want to do? How do I want to look at this situation? Do I want to learn from it? And if I want to learn from it, I'm going to have to try to be a little more objective. I'm going to have to do some digging and see what this is really about. 
All right, I think that's all I have to say this time. I'll put up the next Q&A call for questions really soon. Can you believe it's almost October? Eesh. And I'll get the personals out ASAP by next week of the latest because that's the last week of the month. And then we'll be into October and I can uh, get all my jack-o'-lanterns out and all my Halloween stuff. All right. You guys, please send me a message if you have any questions. It has been so quiet in this Patreon group lately. (laughs) It's been really quiet everywhere. So don't hesitate. I know I'm going through stuff and I just said I'm going through a bunch of stuff. But still, like, if you're having a hard time, post about it. Like, I don't know how the community tab works. I think we've tried that before. If I need to create a Facebook group so we can all chat, I can do that. If, you, if that's a thing that you might want, just let me know. Maybe I'll post a poll about that. In the meantime, enjoy the weather wherever you are. Hope it's great. And I will talk to you again next month. Much love.